Hello, I'm Yanis Simonidis. Today we continue with our new cycle of programs titled Holy Cross Live, which are designed to introduce you to the basic teachings of Orthodox Christianity. During these programs we have been talking with uh, clergy and lay theologians who currently teach at Hellenic College and the Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Theology. Both uh, schools are located on a beautiful campus in Brookline, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. Today's guest is Dr. George Bebis, Professor of Patristic Studies, who will talk with us about the saints, fathers and mothers in the faith. Welcome. It's good to have you with us today. In an article titled The Saints of the Orthodox Church, you write, Holiness or sainthood is a gift or charisma given by God to man through the Holy Spirit. Man's effort to become a participant in the life of divine holiness is essential. But sanctification itself is the work of the Holy Trinity, especially through the sanctifying power of Jesus Christ, who was incarnate, suffered crucifixion, and rose from the dead in order to lead us to the life of holiness through communion with the Holy Spirit. Now, if I may ask you if we can start with uh, a basic, uh, uh, what is the definition of a saint and the different levels of sainthood within the Orthodox Church? Um, of course, uh, it is uh, not easy to give an absolute definition uh, of sainthood and of the saints of the Church. I, however, I must say that um, the term saints or agios has a biblical background. Uh, it comes from the New Testament, naturally from New Testament. And especially St. Paul, in the first letter to Timothy, speaks quite extensively about the main characteristics of sainthood. And of course, uh, I think the main characteristic, not the definition, but if you're going to describe sainthood, the agiotis, to in, the, in, the holiness the of life, uh, you mean, really, we mean uh, about the lifestyle, to use a very nice contemporary term, the lifestyle of men and women who live in the spirit of Christ, who constantly drive and thrive and try hard to become good Christians, good Christians. So it's a constant effort. I may, if you ask me again, if you insist about definition, sainthood is the constant effort to become again and to regain what we have lost in the paradise, to become the images of God as we used to be, to become the images of God. Mm. So that uh, could apply to anyone? Of course. It's, uh, sainthood has uh, apparently a universal phenomenon, it's a universal character, naturally. It is universal for everybody, for men and women, even for children. Uh, we have Children, so you're saying well, that of course, all of us yes, can not become only saints. have the potential, but ought to have of course, the potential. Of course. In reality, uh, Mr. Simonidis, in reality, uh, the term saints in the New Testament times uh, refer to all those who uh, were members of the Christian church, the communion of the saints, kinonia ton, ton piston, you see, or kinonia ton agion, as St. Paul says, the, the communion of saints. So everyone uh, can be and can become a saint of the church. And is this characteristic to the Greek, to the Orthodox Church, or is it, uh, or is it really in, in throughout Christianity? Uh, it's throughout Christianity. 
yes, uh, all the churches and uh, have saints. Uh, we do know that, but of course, uh, since we are Greek Orthodox, uh, Orthodox, we are speaking about here about the Orthodox, particularly the Orthodox saints. But naturally, uh, the Catholic Church, the Anglican Church, have saints, which, by the way, they honor greatly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the uh, so-called different levels of sainthood? What is that about? That's right. Um, usually, uh, I don't like, again, categories or levels, but for, again, for reasons of convenience, we may uh, distinguish uh, some kind of levels of, this, of the saints of the church. For instance, I may say uh, the apostles. Mm. They were the men who uh, have been called personally by Christ and who went to the world uh, to preach the gospel and bring uh, to the world the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Secondly, the prophets, and I should add here the patriarchs of the New Testament, like Abraham, for instance, and especially the prophets, Moses and Isaiah, for instance, and Elijah, uh, are saints of the church. Then we have the fathers of the church, you see, the great fathers of the church, St. Basil the Great, for instance, Gregory of Nyssa, St. John Chrysostom, St. John of Damascus are fathers of the church. What about mothers? Uh, <clears throat> yes, we have mothers of the church, uh, to uh, the surprise of uh, many people. We have mothers of the church. And there are women especially who have excelled themselves, again, in the spirit of Christ, in the spirit of, uh, of uh, purity, uh, and in the spirit of love to Christ and the church. And uh, women who have become the exemplary models for contemporary women. So then, it's interesting, let me tell you yeah. this, uh, that only recently, last year, as I talked to you, Mr. Simonidis, last year, uh, we have the, for the first time, the publication, a very interesting book. The title of the book is Mitericon, Mitericon, which, mm. which means a collection of the saints of the mothers of the church. Uh, that, that is a kind of compi compilation of saints of the mass of the church, and it is in response to what we know up to now, the Gerontikon, the saints of the fathers of the, of, of the Eastern Church. Eastern church. So that's very interesting. Interesting. It so it exists and it's in Exists, that's right, yes. Miterikon from mit, miter, mitera. Mitera, which means, of course, the mothers of the church. Now, so we said that then uh, this is the potential for all of us, and yet some are acknowledged or declared yes. saints. So within the, 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 the Orthodox Church or the Greek Orthodox Church uh, and the Orthodox Church in, 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 in larger picture, what is the so-called canonization process? What is it that what we go through to declare someone a saint? Uh, let me say this, uh, <clears throat> that we don't have any specific legalistic, formalistic or formal uh, procedure or process for canonizing the saints of the Eastern Church. The people of God speaks out clearly, you see. Very orthodox. Uh, very, or very orthodox. <laughs> the people of God, the people of God has its saints. Throughout the centuries, by the way, Saint Basil the Great. Saint who? Basil the Great. Basil the Great. Immediately, even when he was alive, he has been recognized as a distinguished, uh, a great father of the church. By the way, the term great has been uh, rendered to him even when he was alive. At his death, thousands of people, thousands of people followed his um, coffin. And immediately, immediately after his death, he has been recognized by the people and has been respected throughout the centuries. By the way, let me say that um, uh, in 1979, we celebrated uh, the um, 1600th anniversary of, uh, of his, from his death. He died in 379. So he has a universal recognition and the people of God decided on it. Now I come again <clears throat> to what happens today. Uh, I was born in Crete and I do remember, still remember, uh, a small church in the center of the city of Rethmnon in Crete we have the so-called four martyrs of Rethmnon. There were saints who have been hanged, 
and executed uh, in 1821 because they were not ready to deny their faith. Uh, and this Historically speaking, the, we should put that in, in perspective, 1821, 1821 the, the year of the Greek Revolution. Well, the, yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we still have the, um, uh, the uh, remains, uh, the skulls uh, of these saints. They are found uh, in the ch a church which bears the name of the saints in Rethno, the Church of the Four Martyrs. Uh, and the people of Rethno, celebrate every year. It's a local, by the way, it's a local event. Celebrate an hour of those saints uh, in, in the city of Rethmenon. By the way, however, since sometimes uh, this um, recognition, this acceptance by the people may lead to some abuses, in order to avoid those abuses, uh, recently we have, let me use the term established, so to speak, a kind of process, not legalistic process. Uh, it's a rather canonical process. Um, the local bishop, in agreement with the people of God, I referred earlier to the example of the church, to the people of Rethmenon, where I was born. So in accordance with the popular will, both the bishop and the, all the clergy and the laity come together and they send a letter to the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Mm -hmm. And the Ecumenical Patriarchate, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in a synodical meeting, uh, reads the letter and votes, you see, and says a letter of um, recognition. Uh, and this is the this is that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And by the way, let me refer here uh, to a, a famous uh, patriarch, our own Kumelika patriarch, Athenagoras I, who have uh, uh, the chance to proclaim the so-called sainthood of Saint Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain in the 60s. You see, that's a very important thing to remember. I will ask a question that I'm sure is the back of the minds of a lot of people. A lot of people yes. have had thousands following their coffins. A lot of people have had public acclaim, and yet they are not saints. Yes. And uh, without wanting to put yes, you in a, yes. in a difficult, uh, you know, uh, can you comment on that? Is there exactly. something yes. that happens? Uh, again, we don't have a formalistic description of saints. I, I say that, I repeat again. But I was written yesterday in preparing for this uh, broadcasting. I uh, remember I was written a very interesting book, again, St. Nicodemus of Holy Mountain who describes beautifully... Holy Mountain being Mount Athos. That's Athos, right, Holy yeah. Mountain and Mountain Athos, yes. Right. Who describes and gives the major characteristics of a saint. The so-called steps towards holiness. Of course, uh, Saint Codimus speaks for everybody. Everybody can and may go through that kind of uh, spiritual uplifting mm -hmm. and process. He says that we must, first of all, become Servants of God, duly theu. We must become, everybody must become servant of God, serving always God and His will. Secondly, 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 we must become workers in the vineyard of the Lord. That's very important. In every, all the aspects of life, men and women, marry or not marry, you see, students and workers, you see, professors and politicians must constantly be working in the vineyard of the Lord, proclaiming the gospel, living a life of virtue, of Christian virtue, mm -hmm. being real Christians mm -hmm. in faith and in deed. Now, there's a third step. We must become iki or filitheu, which means we must become friends of God. What a nice expression, <laughs> to become a friend of God, which means to must, we must have in the Deep, best terminology the of friendship. Best, of course, <laughs> friendship, you see. What a beautiful expression, to mm -hmm. become a friend of God. And then he goes on, St. Nicodemus goes on, and says that we must become Adelphi Christu, brothers, brothers of Christ, mm -hmm. because we participate in the human nature of Christ. And that participation gives us the ability and the capacity and the charisma 
you see, to become brothers of Christ. And finally, St. Nicodemus says, we must become, and it's a very strange, strange ter 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 terminology, we must become miteres Christu. We must become the mothers of Christ. That means, as the mother of God carried in herself Christ, we must become Christ carriers. We must Christ bear in bears. our own, that's right, in our own chest, so to speak, in our own hearts mm -hmm. and minds and souls. Mm -hmm. We must carry in ourselves Christ mm -hmm. himself. What a great honor. Mm -hmm. And if we become carriers, we must again repeat again this, the expression, but we must become men and women of virtue and devotion and prayer. Mm -hmm a man of holiness and humility and love and forgiveness and fidelity. See. You just brought up the mother of Christ, as we all uh, yes. must, as you said, become, which I had never heard before, but mother of Christ, is she different than the other saints? <coughs> uh, again, we and don't that, have... That's a larger yes, question that's of, right. do we, in the Orthodox Church, yes. do we pray to our saints, to the saints? Do we pray for the intercession by the Virgin Mary? Uh, Do we pray for the intercession by the, the saints? You asked me earlier about the levels, and I did not finish. Allow me to finish, and then I'll yes, reply. Absolutely. Uh, yes. <laughs> we spoke then about the apostles, the prophets, the fathers. They are the martyrs of the church. You see, the martyrs of the church who have shed their precious blood for uh, the sake and for the name of Christ. Then, of course, there are the monastics, men and women, who live the life of the, of the uh, monastic uh, devotion. Uh, and then, finally, are the just ones, the Osi, the DK, mm -hmm. see, uh, who have devoted themselves. And many of them, must, the majority of them, by the way, live, live in the world, secular people, so to speak. Uh, they live as family people, as mothers and, 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 and fathers and daughters and sons, you see. Men and women who have become the daily and the constant witnesses of Christ, okay. you see, as family, pe family people, as teachers, mm -hmm. you see, uh, in workers, yes. you see. Uh, Blue-collar people, workers, blue-collar workers, you see. We cannot become always, we cannot become in our daily life saints of the church by becoming uh, witnesses of the will of God. Then, now if you ask me, you ask me about the Virgin Mary. Again, I don't like to speak about scales, naturally. But in the person of the Virgin Mary, we can make that distinction. Is Panagia, the people of God, decided on this. By the fifth century, we have the term Panagia, the all holy. All holy. The all holy. A term which has not been given to anyone. Then we have the term Theotokos, you see. The woman who gave birth to Theos, to God himself. You see. There was a great debate and conflict in the fifth century between two great patriarchs, by the way, Patriarch Cyril and Cyril of Alexandria, and Nestorius of Constantinople, whether the term Theotokos is a valid term. And the church, during the, in the third and the fourth ecumenical council, decided the mother of God, the Virgin Mary, is Theotokos, could be called Theotokos. Thus, uh, terminology, the people in the third and fourth ecumenical councils, councils. This is when all the leaders of the church, the church when exactly? Fifth century? Uh, uh, fourth, uh, fourth, fifth century. Fifth century. 451. 451. They came together from all parts of the world. Uh, I'll repeat about. myself. I'll repeat myself. Uh, 431. 431 is the third ecumenical council in Ephesus. Mm -hmm. And 451 is the, the fourth ecumenical the fourth. council in Chalcedon. And that's where outside we decided. Of yes. That's right. It was decided. Decided right then, these two great medical councils decided that the Virgin Mary could and must be called Theotokos. So, this is the only woman, the only human person who has been you know, referred to like Theotokos. Now, in our church, do we pray? We do, 
course. Yes, to, to the pray. Yes. Do we pray to the saints? We, you, and to pray to the saints, what, of course. How do we see them then? How do we set them within our Greek, the, the Orthodox Church and the Greek Orthodox Church? How do we see them? What do we expect from them? We pray to the saints. How do we <coughs> behave vis-à-vis yes. -vis them? Yes. Again, uh, I use the term as brothers and sisters, uh, as men uh, who, and women <coughs> who pray for us. You see, the, the fact that we pray to the saints is a testimony of our faith to the life after death. The saints live, you see, and participate and cherish and pretaste the glory of God, living already, living already, the joys, you see, uh, of paradise. So living already and participating in the glory of God can feel us being themselves human. They have tested the difficulties, the dramas, the tragedies, you see, the temptations, you see, of the human nature. So they can pray for us. We have New Testament testimonies on this. And also, from the house of the church, we have quite many testimonies on this, um, which prove that the prayers of the, of, the, of the fathers, of course, and of the saints, and of the martyrs, and especially of the Virgin Mary, are effective for us. Uh, I want to ask you uh, something here about something very uh, characteristic of, of uh, the Orthodox. Uh, and especially the Greek Orthodox, which is, yes. is what at least I personally uh, uh, can, 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 can witness, to can testify. The, 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 the marvelous, the saints of the patron saints. Yes. The, 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 the saints of the sea and the saints of the, of the, of the hill, Saint Prophet Nicholas, Elias. Saint Nicholas, Saint Nicholas of the sea, Saint Elias. Tell us about this tradition in, uh, in Orthodox. Of course, uh, again, this tradition is an A ancient beautiful tradition, body beautiful tradition. Of, of hymnology, beautiful. of yes. iconography. Of course. Of, of music, of every yeah. tradition. Not just. Um, every city, by the way, every city has its patron saint. Every city. The city of Athens, where I grew up, for instance, has Saint Dionysius, the Aeropagite, uh, in the city of Rethno, where I was born, the four martyrs. Saint Demetrius, of course, uh, is the patron saint of uh, Thessaloniki. Saint Andrew the Apostle, of course, the patron saint of Constantinople. You see you. So we and have Saint a, Nicholas, the Saint Nicholas, Saint, the patron saint of, 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 of the, all the waters, of all of the, the waters, of the ships. You see, there's no any and the sailors. sailor of the sailors. There's no any sailor who do not turn in moments of difficulty uh, to the patron saint Saint Nicholas, and we have and some marvelous stories about course, Prophet Elias and why he's on top of, of the hill, yes. always the little churches. Of course, and we have. Hundreds and hundreds and thousands of uh, miracles by St. Nicholas. Everybody. I remember my mother from my father <coughs> and my grandfather who's a priest. Stories like this in Crete, when prayers uh, to the patron saint of St. Nicholas have saved many, many sailors from uh, certain destruction mm -hmm. in the waters, in the sea. Uh, I give you an example, for instance, of a patron saint, St. Nectarius of Aegina. You see. I have visited Aegina many, many times. And you can see um, devotions, um, small, um, let's say, His remains are, 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 His remains are there, there. But also you can see uh, many, many devotions, uh, small gifts uh, who have been presented to St. Uh, Nectarius uh, by hundreds of people who have become who have become well, who have been healed from their diseases, or they have been saved also uh, uh, from wreckages. Uh, or, or any other uh, distractions yes. during their own lives. We only have about three minutes, so I would like to ask you about modern day saints mm -hmm. and how did they arrive at that? Uh, yes, uh, we, do have, we do have, this century by the way, we have Saint Nectarius of Aegina. He died in Athens uh, in um, 1920. Uh, and just recently, by the way, we have the um, recognition in quotation marks of another saint, Saint Nicholas Planas, who lived last century. Uh, also, we have, as you do know, we have uh, Saint Herman of Alaska, which of course is an American saint. Um, 
And um, uh, there are plenty, there's a greater number of contemporary saints, especially for last century. Uh, and also, let me, let me say this, we have saints, martyrs of the church of this century in Russia. See. How is the recognition yes. process there very similar? Uh, as, it's similar, it's similar, it's similar. Uh, the Russian church uh, in a synodical meeting and in the liturgical gathering. That's, that's very important, which must mention again. The same thing happens also in the uh, Greek-speaking world. The local bishop uh, convenes uh, a liturgical meeting. There's a liturgy, Vesper serves liturgy, and the official proclamation, the letter of the Comelica Patriarchate is, is read, so you have an official recognition. The same thing happens with the Church of Russia. Uh, and also in Greece, uh, in the 40s, in the 40s, we have men and women and children who have been executed, the priests mm. who have been executed because simply they were Christians. And especially we have, I have a book uh, which I was going to say, there's a huge body yes, of literature of that is oh, yes. marvelous, marvelous reading. Books, oh, marvelous. Would you recommend that? As of a course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> we have books, many books. And yes. by the way, recently in an Orthodox magazine, we have the compilation of names of priests who have given their lives but they were, because simply they were Christian Orthodox priests in the 40s and 50s mm -hmm. in Greece. And probably a lot will emerge from yes, the, and of course. The, 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 the year in, in Eastern Europe now, from, the, from those years exactly, of oppression. Exactly. A lot I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, Mr. Monidis, that eventually, uh, already it has be, the process has become, the process again, uh, speaking, you know, simply uh, informatively, um, that uh, those priests who have died for Christ in the 40s of the 50s become officially saints of the Church of the Church of Christ. We are out of time. The, of course, the, 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 the thought is, the interesting thought is that we are living in the presence of a lot of people. And as you said, it's all of us. All but of us. But we are living in the presence of people of, of around the world right now that are functioning uh, uh, on, on this, that particular yes. level and probably they will be recognized. But thank you for the insight that sainthood is in all of us. And that is very, very important and very precious to have in mind. We are out of time. I thank you very, very much. Thank Dr. you very Davies. much. You've been watching Holy Cross Live. This is Yanis Simonidis for Illuminations. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>